This is a short audio-visual presentation on power factor, which is an important aspect of all alternating current circuits. You may wish to pause the presentation occasionally to examine the slides. Alternating current is produced by rotating conductors, and these produce a sinusoidal voltage and current output. Resistive loads like heaters and lamps consume real power, and no power is wasted. Motors and coils, while consuming some real power, also consume reactive power, and this power is wasted producing magnetic fields and does no work for us. If we examine the sine waves of real power and reactive power, or resistive and inductive loads respectively, we can see that on the left hand side, in the case of the real power, the voltage and the current are in phase, whereas on the right hand side we see that the current is lagging behind the voltage, here shown by an angle of 90 degrees, however this is an extreme case and it will usually be much less than this. When we examine the phasor diagram for resistive load, we find again that the current is in phase with the voltage and there is no angle. Whereas when we look at the phasor diagram for an inductive load, we find that the current is lagging behind the voltage by the angle theta. Also in the case of capacitance, the current is found to lead the voltage by some angle theta. And this is useful in correcting the power factor caused by inductances. So back to our inductance. We can explain this by use of an analogy. Consider a load pulled by a horse along a towpath. Here the load is in line with the river. But what happens if the horse must pull the same load but at an angle to the river? We can use our analogy to, to explain the phenomenon caused in both systems. The real power is the work done in our electrical system and the work done by running the barge along the river. The apparent power is the work done by our generators and electrical systems and by the horse in this case. And the reactive power is the wasted part. If we leave the analogy and we look at the resulting power triangle we find an important part, the power factor, which is the cosine of this angle. The power factor can also be shown as the cosine of the angle, as I've said. The power of the power and power, P over S, which is sometimes seen as kilowatts over KVA, or in circuits, or over Z. We can calculate all of the angles and the relationships using trigonometry. If we have any two of these items, we can then find the rest as shown by these commonly used electrical formula. So examining power factor, if the angle theta is zero degrees, then we have a power factor of 1, which is ideal. If the angle of theta was 45 degrees, the power factor, being the cosine of 45 degrees, is 0 0.707. And in the extremely bad case, where the angle is 90 degrees, the power factor is 0. So if we examine our two systems together, we can see that by reducing the angle for the horse on the river, we reduce the work that he has to do and by reducing the phase angle in our electrical system we can reduce the apparent power to be close in magnitude to the real power. This means keeping the phase angle small and the power factor as close to one as possible.